Hi, this is Walt from Lone Wolf Rolls Royce Bentley Service in Chino, California. Uh, this is the third and final video I'll be shooting on the brake pumps for this uh, particular car, uh, which is a 75 Silver Shadow, and I'll show you the car. It's actually a, a fairly nice car, and in fairly good shape for its age. There she is, and this is a little bit of my shop here. Okay, I guess I won't move so fast with the camera so you can catch up. Okay, now back to the bench. Okay, here we have a brake pump that I have assembled and it's all there except for putting the, the cover on. And I just want to show you, first of all, the special tool that it takes to take off a brake pump. This is it right here. Uh, Rolls-Royce is very, very proud of this tool. They want like $360 for it. So if you do buy one, be very careful how you use it because it's, it's a very delicate tool. Those ears are very, very temperamental. And if you over torque it, you could actually bust those ears off. So be very careful. First thing I wanted to show you on one of the brake pumps that I took out uh, where the tool actually connects to which I'll show you here. This actually goes on like this and it locks into place. Okay, That's how you properly take a brake pump off. If you look down here you'll see there's all kinds of uh, marks if I can get in that a little bit better. You can see that imperfection right there. This uh, brake pump at one time, due to the person taking it off, not having the proper tool, probably took off this pump with a burp gun and basically did a partial destruction of the pump. Uh, still a usable pump, but um, really should not do it this way. Uh, I can understand if it was an emergency situation, but I might project that that was not the case here. I think it was just the wrong person working on the car using the wrong tools, which we see only so often. Okay, here's the brake pump. And that is all cleaned up, ready to go. Um, on the last video, I did mention that I, was, I cleaned up the original housing. And after closer inspection I found right about where the o-ring grooves go which are here these o-rings have to mate with uh, this here to co create a seal about here and about here and when you look in here you'll see in various spots that there's some erosion Let's see and what happens here is once a, a part is this clean, if, uh, if you don't have a good uh, surface, you're not going to have a complete seal. So in this case, I'm going to deem this thing junk uh, just because it's eroded and I don't feel like doing this job twice. So we're going to not use that part and we're going to use this one instead. This is actually a, a really good brake pump that I got off of one of the wrecked cars. Um, and as you can see, it's very clean inside. And this is a used part. The new housings are so expensive, it's, uh, I don't even want to utter the price because you might fall off your chair. So we're going to give this customer a good price discount for a really good used one. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. It can be used. So this will go with the rest of the debris that I have taken out of this pump. And everything should be fine. I also wanted to cover another part before we go into the uh, checking of the brake pump. Uh, this one here that I've already rebuilt and I'm ready to test. So we'll be testing it together right on the video. 
So whatever happens will be true life. But before we do that, I wanted to show you what's below the brake pump. And that is what we have. These are these brake pump push rods. And as you can see, these here are still intact, but I've already taken these out of other cars and I use these as examples. I'll try to get as close as I can with this camera to show you, but in this area here, there's actually erosion. Uh, this erosion usually happens because uh, old oil in the car, car sitting too long, moisture gets into the old oil, and these are all machined steel products and rust is the enemy. So the erosion actually starts uh, coming from the old oil that just sits in the um, cam follower and just uh, this is a very very slow process it takes years and years and years but eventually uh, nature wins so when that happens then you have to replace them and the best thing to do whenever you do a, a brake pump reseal uh, there's a lot of shortcuts on this job. I see it all the time. There are people that don't even remove the brake pump. They literally just change uh, these two seals, uh, clean this up maybe, pop it all back together, and you're good to go. There's an internal seal that also needs to be changed. And if that thing gets too hard, uh, it'll actually bypass leak, and your brake fluid will actually start emptying into your uh, crankcase. So it's very important to do the job and do it right so that you don't, so you have the, the maximum benefits out of the job. Getting back to these again, I'll show you that there's actually the two on the left are broken. You can easily see the distance uh, between the two. The other guys are broken off. I don't have those broken pieces for those brake pumps. However, in working on this car, I have run into all kinds of uh, unorthodox type of uh, repairs. Uh, number one, uh, this brake pump had this washer connected to the bottom. So between <coughs> the uh, mount where you bolt the brake pump to, which is the valley cover, there was actually this uh, drain washer that was between the two points. Now, what they were trying to accomplish was these uh, rods have to travel in a certain distance and it has to work in that distance. And this thing was so off that they tried to compensate for that. Um, in further investigation, what I found was that these two little parts here were actually in the uh, in that uh, cam follower they were just sitting in there so because everything was so off I went right down to you know basics and I cleaned the area out I stuck a magnet in there which is one of these guys and actually poke it right in the hole and you can see how the magnet is so friendly with these little metal parts so they came right up so I was really relieved to find the answer to my question uh, that nothing was making sense. Both these brake pumps when they came in uh, when I measured the distance on the push rods they were like an eighth of an inch off. I've never seen anything like it. So whoever worked on this car and did this particular job uh, please don't do this type of work. <laughs> Not good for anybody. Um, this is actually a, uh, a depth micrometer and that's what we do we use to uh, measure uh, the uh, where this thing should be positioned inside the engine. I'm just going to walk over here briefly and show you where the brake pump would go. Turn the light on right down there. Now this is brake pump number two area and it's right next to the distributor and as you can see I had to remove the distributor to gain access. Uh, you tie back 
the high pressure line here to get it out of the way so that you have more working area so you can remove the pump. And if you look in there, you'll actually see the uh, brake pump push rod, which is right in here in the center. This is where I found that um, O-ring, or I'm sorry, not O-ring, but that aluminum washer. They put the washer here and then they bolted the brake pump on top of that. This is really not the way to work on a car. Try not to do that. Um, okay, so as you can see from the last uh, video that I shot that this area has been cleaned up somewhat. And we will clean it up even more after we put the brake pump in there, get them primed. There's still going to be some brake pump leakage as I prime the pumps. And after that we hit it with the brake clean and then air dry it for the final. So it'll look even better than it does now. Okay. Um, and I also want to, since I'm right here by the car, show you that we also... Um, this car had, if you look at the first video, had a very, very dirty reservoir. Uh, we went ahead and uh, had this thing powder coated and when we powder coat it we put in some special ingredients that is uh, resistant to brake fluid and fuel uh, so that if you ever spill any brake fluid on this it will not uh, rip a hole in it. And if you look down here you can see the sight glasses have also been changed, they're crystal clear. There's no fluid in the reservoir at present because we're not uh, we don't have any hoses connected to it at this point. So that is the brake reservoir refinished. Okay, going back to the bench. I am now going to do the test. This is what I use. If you look at the back of the pump, you'll see like there's a little hole here. Real easy. Of course, I'm not left-handed, so there we go. All right, so this is where you hold the tool, and you can use anything. I just use a punch just because it, it, it works really well. This just happens to be a, a snap-on punch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pushing this in this direction and get the fluid working, and then if you look towards the front, you'll see if the pump works or not. So here we go. As you see, it's sucking the fluid down and it's coming out. So that means that brake pump is working. No problem there. Okay, so that one is good to be installed in the car and naturally you have to empty out the brake fluid. You gotta take this cover back off in order to put it back in the car uh, using the proper tool and tightening it down. So that is the finished product and if you were following the, the last two videos, uh, especially the first one, uh, when you saw how badly uh, this pump looked, it was extremely dirty. There was so much crud inside, as we call it, the chicken soup uh, syndrome inside. That's just old brake fluid that has absorbed so much uh, moisture that it's actually turned into a gel. You should never let your car go that far. Uh, very, very important to keep uh, these uh, hydraulic systems in uh, good working order. And it doesn't cost a million dollars to do that. You just have to spend a little money and put a little extra time into the car and find a good mechanic, especially if you're not in my area, uh, that can do this for you. Um, What's next? Okay, so this is going to be installed. Um, this is brake pump number one. And that also will be installed. So we may get this thing all put together by the end of the day, if not by tomorrow. And then we'll get the car running and start bleeding it out. So with that said, I think the lesson for today is over. And uh, until next time, I hope you enjoyed the show. Take care.